foreign policy. And what they're doing now is they're executing wars, the United States, into Pakistan that has more refugees online now going nowhere since Rwanda. The hate, anti-American hatred growing in, Af- in Afghanistan, Iraq already, and now in Pakistan, we are fearful is going to spill over into the United States. And you don't need a group, Al-Qaeda or any other organization. It just takes anybody. You're talking that, domestic terror attacks yes, here on our land in the United States. A high probability in 2010 and if not in the United States a major strike of 9-11 proportions someplace in the world. You can't keep fighting wars like this and not having blowback. So you're, say, you're saying the wars that we've been conducting have created so much resentment well, that listen, you expect, you, you, you expect. I mean, you, you don't obviously have any any in no, on, saying, on, a, on a terrorist plot. No, you're what just, we're saying, Ken and John, is this: Let's suppose you're a Pakistani, and all of a sudden you lost your family, your relatives, and who knows what else. You think you'll be angry. You think there will be revenge. It's not going to be about they hate our freedom and liberty. It's about getting even. And prostate, the United States is just pumping $7.5 billion into Pakistan. Look at the news in South Waziristan, in the Swat Valley. Anti-Americanism in Pakistan is running at levels we've never seen before. And you have over 200,000 Pakistanis here. And you could bet that somebody here has lost a lot of people over there. And what kind of anti-American activities are you seeing in Pakistan? Oh, the demonstrations and the blow-ups. They're every day, when, when Pakistan, because of the United States, is pushing them to wipe out the Taliban on the, on the Afghan-Pakistan borders, what happens is every time they, they could take a major strike into one of these areas, you know what they do next? They blow up police stations. They blow up markets. And you look at the demonstrations. They're not making the news. The demonstrations, the anti-Americanism, look at the polls. They're off the charts. All right. Let's, Hang on. Let's stop you right there. We come back more with Gerald Salente. He's the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute. We had him on last year. He's a famous trends forecaster and has forecast some of the uh, biggest historical events over the last uh, 25 years it, it, it or so. It sounds more grim than last year. It does. <laughs> it's, uh, it's considerably more grim. More with Gerald Salente when we come back on the Johnny Ken Show. KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. John and Ken Show, John Cobelt and Ken Shampoo. We continue with Gerald Salente, the founder and director of the Trends Research Institute. They look at what's going on in the world and project where it's going to go. Yeah, and, he was uh, on the show a year ago, and he gave quite a forecast. Uh, but, of course, uh, what he's talking about is uh, several years into the future as well. Let me read the first uh, paragraph from the Trends Journal. the, autumn, the autumn of 2009, yeah. Autumn 2012, the Great Depression has spread worldwide. Billions are unemployed, homeless and desperate. Countries bankrupt, trade packs broken, tariffs rise, borders close. Protectionist, nationalist, and anti-globalization movements have moved out of the margins and into the mainstream. Immigrants brought in during boom times, blamed for bringing down wages, stealing jobs, and rising crime are being rounded up and deported. You oh. really think that's going to happen in this country? It's happening already uh, in, in every one of those areas. You could go back to trade. Right now, the United States and China are in a trade dispute. Uh, where they have, the United States put uh, tariffs on tires and, and piping. It was a big issue when Obama went over to Asia. You're seeing anti-immigration uh, sentiments swelling. You go down the list, the homeless. I was listening when I was waiting to go on the air. They're giving out tarps uh, for, uh, for the homeless. Uh, ten cities are sprouting up all, all over the country. Can anything uh, change this trajectory? Yes. Uh, the only things that could change it is we need a productive capacity. For example, you go back to the 1990s when, when Clinton got elected. His mantra was, it's the economy, stupid. We were in a recession. What got us out of that recession? It wasn't brilliant government thinking. It was called the Internet Revolution. Products were invented, designed, manufactured, marketed, serviced. All the, our whole lives changed. It was a productive capacity. 
if we have something like that, for example, an alternative energy, but beyond wind, solar, geothermal, or biofuel, something really revolutionary, where we're off the grid, we have our own energy-producing units, like what, the, like what the Internet did to change our lives. But, but how often bigger. does something fantastic like that happen? It can happen any day. It's happening, but the resources aren't going into it. Look, this government is – all the so many of the governments are corrupt. But, I mean, just look at the numbers that are going on. You know, we don't have a democracy. We have a plutocracy. What is it, 44 percent of the representatives are multimillionaires in this company? Oh, yeah, really representative of a, of a median household income of $44,000. So the money isn't going into the right places. Look, this is perfect empire decline. Line. All you have to do is, you don't even have to go back to the Romans, just go back to the English. You want to fight wars in, 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 in foreign countries and deplete the treasury at, at a tune of what, already a trillion dollars uh, budget every year, plus, plus, plus. So the money isn't being allocated for us to expand in a way that would get us out of this. Is, is this health care reform attempt any good, or is it going to spiral us into more debt? It's going to spiral us into more. How could anybody? How could any thinking adult put any of their faith in any of the government policies? Show me one thing, John and Ken, that they've done so brilliantly. Oh, let's look at Katrina. Oh, wonderful rescue skills. Uh, good show, Brownie. Great job. And oh, and the New World Trade Center is a New Yorker. I love to look up. To, I can't see the top of it. They've rebuilt it so well. Oh, and the wars. They they're fighting overseas. Brilliant job. Just give us a couple of trillion more and a couple of more years, and we'll spend all your money and keep on losing. How could people put any faith in one thing that these gov- the government has done? Look at the people. Pelosi, Frank, Bonner, Bond, McConnell. How about Lo- Ma- Mo Larry and Curly? <laughs> really? I mean, how could grown-ups actually believe that these people could think better than they can? The only thing that they politicians are good at are having jobs they never have to get their fingernails dirty at doing. Well, we appreciate talking to you once again as usual. Uh, amazing. Thanks, Gerald, for talking hey, thank to you. Guys. All right, bye Gerald bye. Salenti is the uh, trend forecaster, founder, director of like the a... Trends Research Institute. Yeah, I ain't going to have well, a stiff drink, I think. Uh, it's pretty much over. All right. We need productive capacity. We've talked about this. Well, you know, I mean, we were just talking last time about Obama and the stimulus spending, and it all goes to government jobs. We need the private sector to step up. It can happen. You know, we're a country of great inventions, Mr. I, Cobalt. I don't know how bad it's going to get and how quickly, but as far as his analysis of what's going on now, there's nothing I disagree with. He's right on everything he said about what's going on now. All right, when we, we come, come back, yeah, Schwarzenegger announced.